Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can convert 4D scan data into expression blend shapes and visemes for facial animation and lip syncing. In the previous video, we completed the main expressions with wrinkles, while in this video, we're going to add some additional expressions to complement the library that we already have, which can give us even more subtle and detailed results. 4D scan technology refers to the operation of capturing an actor's expressions over a period of time and scanning them. The result is that you'll obtain a large number of OBJs or other 3D format files. You can see the different expressions demonstrated at different points on the timeline here in RAP. To get started, let's export our completed CC avatar file in OBJ format with the current pose, being sure to check Export Material. At this point, we have three sets of data. The first is the CC avatar we just exported. Then we have the 4D scan raw data that we just saw. And third is the CC topology 4D scan data in the folder titled RL Kevin 4D Cleaned. In this video, the 4D scan raw data will only be used for reference, as our main focus will be on the CC topology 4D scan data and the CC avatar. To set up our project, let's start by creating a load geom node and importing our 4D scan raw data. We have all of the OBJs organized in a folder, and RAP will auto-detect the sequence once I load the first one in. After we have the basic geometry loaded in, we can create a load image node and import the textures. We need to then increase the timeline range to 4500 to accommodate all of the scanned data. Looks like it's all loaded in fine, so let's create another load geom node, this time importing the CC topology 4D scan data. We'll also need an additional load image node to connect to that. Now we also need to create an unsubdivision geom node, as the current face count of the CC topology 4D scan data is twice that of the standard CC base in this scenario. Everything is looking good so far. Since the 4D scan raw data is just for reference, we can move it aside for now and display it when needed. Finally, let's create a final load geom node and this time import in the CC avatar OBJ we exported at the beginning of this video. Since we're outputting the entire character, we also need to create a select polygons node. From there, we'll enter into visual editor mode and select the head mesh, then hide the unnecessary meshes, including the eyeballs, eyelashes, and tear ducts. Since we selected export material during our export from character creator, we can now choose the standard skin head material as a reference to select the entire head mesh. After this, we need to create a subset node in order to exclude the meshes that we haven't selected. Once we connect that properly, we'll have an isolated head mesh. Okay, let's pause for a minute and take a look at our current node structure. On the left, we have the CC avatar. In the middle is the CC topology 4D scan data. And on the right, we have the 4D scan raw data. Let's continue by creating a transform node in order to adjust the height of both the 4D scan raw data and the CC topology 4D scan data to match that of the CC avatar for easier observation. Now as we drag through the timeline, we can see that both the 4D scan raw data and the CC topology 4D scan data display normally. Next, we need to connect the vertex displacement of each expression in the CC topology scan data to the CC avatar. First, I'll need to create a blend shapes node to act as a connection between the CC topology 4D scan data and the CC avatar. From there, I'll create an additional load geom node to import in the first OBJ in the sequence, as this is a base one without expression. Be sure to load as a single file in this case, as we need it to act as a base zero level for blend shape intensity. Ensure that the polygon counts match, and then connect the unsubdivision node. 
Now when we drag through the timeline, we can see that the vertex displacement has now successfully been transferred over to the CC avatar. Okay, now we're ready to export our expression blend shapes for import back into Character Creator. To get started, let's find an expression we like, then create an apply subset node. Connect it properly, and then create a save geom node in order to export the CC avatar with this new expression. I'll save it to a new folder called Blend Shapes, keeping the hash marks in the file name, and click the Compute Current Frame button to export. Now it's time to import this new expression to Character Creator. Let's open up the Facial Profile Editor and click on the OBJ button to import the OBJ that we just exported. Let's create a new category for it called Custom. This will give us a new custom slider, and we can see the results when we adjust the intensity. In order to replace the existing slider for this expression, we can go ahead and find it, and click on the little lightning bolt quick update button to overwrite the existing data. Since this particular expression is divided into left and right sides, it will prompt us to update both relevant sliders at once. From there, we can test out the sliders individually or simultaneously to check the results. Okay, lastly, let's look at importing Visine blend shapes for use with Aculips automatic lip syncing. Generally, we want these sliders to only affect the mouth, so we will need to apply some regional masking. For the most part, it's fairly difficult for actors to isolate specific parts of their faces when posing for the scans. Normally, other areas of the face will be affected even slightly, as you can see here. Therefore, we want to mask out areas that are not needed when we're importing our Visine data for lip syncing. To get started, let's create a Select Polygons node and enter into the Visual Editor once again to select the areas that we need. From there, I'm going to select the area from the mid-nose to the mid-neck, as these are the parts of the mesh that will be affected. Next, I'll create a Polygon Selection to Vertex Mask node, and use the selected areas as the masked regions. A Modify Vertex Mask node will help to smooth out the edges of the masked region by adjusting the radius and iteration values. From there, I'm going to create a Mixed Geom node and connect it with the Blend Shapes node in order to apply the Vertex Displacement to the mouth area that we've selected. Now when I adjust the Blend Weight in the Mixed Geom node, you can see that only the isolated area is affected. That is the OBJ that we want for our Visim, so let's go ahead and connect that Mixed Geom node through to the Save Geom node to export using the same process. Let's import the Visine blend shape to our same custom folder for now and test the results. We can then once again quick update the relevant slider in the Visine slider group. Finally, if you feel that the expression results could conform more closely to the raw scan model, you can utilize GoZ in order to export the model to ZBrush for more detailed refinements. As we walked through in the previous video, simply click on GoZ to export the model to ZBrush. After that, we can create another Save Geom node in Wrap to save out our raw scan model data and import that into ZBrush as well. From there, we can do the sort of editing that we looked at in the previous videos to conform the mesh more closely to our more expressive raw scan. Then click on All in ZBrush to quickly update the results to Character Creator. Upon update, you'll see the mouth shape is now updated for a stronger and more accurate result. This same process can be used to update any expression data in addition to the Visine data we just completed.
That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.